vicinity, as well as UDC and a number of embassies. All of this was taking place there along with the Ava Van Ness Apartments. This is where all the activity was centered earlier today. We had a number of schools on lockdown. UDC sent out a tweet just a short time ago saying that lockdown has been lifted as of 913 tonight. So we are seeing some progress. Last time we saw you, we know that police were searching for the suspect or person of interest, as they call him, 23 year old Raymond Spencer of Fairfax, Virginia. We heard from the uh, assistant police chief saying a little earlier, Emmerman, that they just wanted him to turn himself in. They wanted to ask him a few questions to figure out how he may have been involved in this shooting earlier today. But as we look live there at the scene along Van Ness Street and Connecticut Avenue in Northwest, you can see DC Mayor Muriel Bowser and police walking up to the podium to give us an update on the situation there. And it has no doubt been a very tense day. This all started at roughly 3.30 today. People had no idea what was going on. Witnesses telling us they heard dozens and dozens of shots being fired in that area. Some people describing them as fireworks, other people saying a jackhammer. Uh, but again, still a lot of questions. So let's listen to the police chief, Robert Conti, right now. Good evening, everyone. I am Robert J. Conti, the third chief of police here in Washington, D.C. of the Metropolitan Police Department. I'm joined by the mayor of the District of Columbia, the Honorable Mary Muriel Bowser, as well as several of our partners uh, from area law enforcement agencies. I want to give you an update on the incident, the shooting that we had here on Connecticut Avenue uh, earlier today, just after 3 o'clock p.m. Today, evil reared its ugly head in our community. People were unnecessarily shot in our community as a result of a senseless act of violence. So far, I can report to you that the victims, we have four victims and those victims are being treated at area hospitals. Three of those four victims are being treated at area hospitals. The suspect that we believe is responsible for this is now deceased. We believe that the suspect took his own life as MPD members were entering or breaching the apartment where the suspect was located. I am unable to confirm the identity of the suspect at this time uh, pending uh, official notification to the family. But I will say that uh, we put out a person of interest earlier and we are no longer looking for that person of interest. I will also tell you that uh, one of the individuals who was shot, the male who was shot, is a retired member of the Metropolitan Police Department. There's one uh, juvenile child that was shot and then the other two are adult females that were shot. I want to thank the members of our law enforcement community, our federal partners from the ATF, FBI, uh, U.S. Secret Service, United States Park Police, UDC Police, the entire resource, the entire law enforcement resource of the District of Columbia collaborated tonight to ensure the safety of this community. I can report to the community that we will be breaking down this perimeter so that residents will be able to get back home. All of the children that were in the schools that sheltered in place are safe and being reunited uh, with most of them have been reunited with their families. We probably have one kid that we're uh, just waiting on a, a family member, but all of the children uh, have been reunited with their family members. So we're very thankful that no more of our children uh, were injured tonight. Uh, I can also tell you that inside of the suspect's uh, apartment, We've recovered over six firearms to include several long guns, multiple, multiple rounds of ammunition, and, and handguns as well. This investigation is ongoing. As we work with our partners, our federal partners from the FBI, ATF, and all the other partners that I mentioned, we will get to the bottom of this. We will find out what the motive is. And right now, we do not have that answer. But the answer that we do have is that our communities are now safe and they are safe because of the swift work of police officers who were very methodical in their efforts to ensure the safety and security of our children 
and to sort, ensure the safety and security of the residents and visitors here to the District of Columbia. That will conclude the formal statement. And if you have any questions, I can take a few questions to talk about what else we, we can share at this point. Did the individual who killed himself have a connection to the Edmund Burke School? And did he obtain the weapons legally, as far as you know? As far as I know, uh, we're not sure if he had a connection to the Edmund Burke School. And it appears that the weapons that he has, based on some preliminary information, that they may have been obtained legally. Next question. Chief, uh, Casey Nolan, WSA 9, what can you say about this video we've seen? Did he stream this act live? We don't know if it was streamed live or if it, it was recorded and then posted. Uh, we will, that's part of our investigation, and we just don't know the answer to that right now. Yes, sir, you here. Chief, Eric Phillips CNN. heard reports of a tripod uh, in the window of the man's apartment um, facing towards where he was shooting when um, MPD uh, went to his apartment, did they find evidence of a tripod or anything pointing out of a window? I can confirm that. Uh, this was very much a sniper type setup with a tripod and this person, obviously his intent uh, was to kill and hurt uh, members of our community. Chief, were, was he the only shooter involved in this situation or were there more? We do not believe there are any other shooters. We believe that this is the shooter. Uh, the members of the Metropolitan Police Department responded very quickly, and based upon collaboration with community members, they were able to isolate uh, the location where the shooting was coming from, the, f to, uh, the fifth floor uh, of this particular apartment building. So they were able to lock that down and ultimately, uh, again, breach the location where the suspect uh, took his life. Next question. Clarence, uh, I'm sorry. Is there another question over here? They were going about their business. They were on the streets of the District of Columbia uh, when they were shot. Next question. Chief, yes. Connect the victims at all in any way? Does it appear that he was shooting them at random? Is there any, any, any pattern or anything? That you it just appears that this person was just shooting randomly uh, at anyone who was out there. Uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, it speaks to the depravity of some of the individuals that we have to face in our communities. But again, uh, I am so thankful for the collaboration at, with community members, uh, for community members who had a swift eye to what was going on, who alerted their law enforcement officers who were able to respond very quickly to that location, to that floor, isolate that location, uh, extract residents from, safely from the building, shelter the children in place in school, send police officers there to the school to assist in comforting those kids and ultimately getting the kids out of the line of fire to a secondary location where they could be successfully reunited with their parents. Um, you know, that's, that's really, that's, that, that's, if there's anything that, that, that's good that comes out of this is that not more people than what were hurt ended up being hurt because there could have been a lot of damage done uh, tonight, more damage done and lives lost as a result of what this gunman uh, did tonight. Any other questions? I'll take one or two more. Yes, sir. That video that's circulating on yes. social media, you can confirm that that is the, the video, at least images of the shooting. And if it is, what role did that play, if any, in locating this suspect? It appears that it is the video. Uh, obviously, as we go through forensically and do our examination, uh, we'll be able to make that a uh, determination uh, for certain. Uh, certainly, uh, if you've seen it, I've seen it. Uh, it looks very much to be authentic, but we want to just make sure of that. And I would say that uh, it was also very helpful in us in terms of making sure that we were focused in on the right on the right place. Yes, sir, the gentleman in the back with his hand up. I love Mel Bowser. She's the best. Thank you, baby. Well, and Can you tell us what floor the, the suspect's apartment was on? What yeah, floor? We, uh, on the fifth floor. Yes. Uh, one last question. Any other questions? Chief, uh, was, I can't, I'm sorry. I yeah, can't see. Where are you? I, okay. You're right here, yes. sir. Uh, what, were any of the victims inside the school? No. Uh, the victims did not. Someone may have ended up in the school, but n there were not shots that were fired that ended up striking someone that was inside the school, at least that's my understanding right now. Again, this has been a very, um it's been a very fluid situation, as you all can imagine, uh, you know, to have an incident of this magnitude to occur uh, right here in one of the busiest corridors of our uh, city. Uh, things have been unfolding. Information has been coming in uh, very rapidly, and we're just, again, sifting through everything to make sure that we have uh, all of our T's crossed, all of our I's dotted, and we really get to the bottom of what the motive was behind this. Uh, I can't express enough. Uh, I just think that it speaks to the depravity of some of the individuals that we 
we deal with uh, out here, uh, it, who, someone who would do something like this, uh, you know, I, I, I really don't really have a lot of words for it. But again, I'm glad that that person is no longer a threat to the citizens of the District of Columbia. Well, Chief, you said you used the word sniper. This is a city that knows what it's like to have a sniper on the loose 20 years ago or so. What, yes, sir. Just put that in some context for us, what you were dealing with as you were trying to track him down tonight. Yeah, I mean, it's a very tense situation. I mean, you don't know what you don't know in that situation. I mean, we all, you know, recall, uh, you know, back in that time when we had the sniper, the D.C. sniper situation unfolding. Uh, unfortunately, that situation unfolded over the course of several days. Uh, this incident was over and resolved in a matter of a few hours. Yeah, does uh, this person of interest or suspect, um, has MPD or any law enforcement had engagement with him in the past? Does he have any kind of criminal record that we uh, that you, you know about? Not that I can tell so far. Of what I've been preliminarily told, no. Yes, sir. Uh, Chief, uh, can you tell us a bit more, this idea he was shooting as a, from a sniper's nest, how wide an area was he spraying and can you give us some, some sense of how many shots did he fire? We heard witnesses saying as many from 20 to 80. How many rounds were fired? How you know, it's a widespread area, or was it, was it targeted around a single block or a courtyard or an alley? Can you describe the, the kind of the fire? I can't field? get that specific. Um, I can tell you he was shooting from, uh, from north to south, and uh, there were multiple rounds. I would say an ex definitely in excess of 20 rounds. I don't know what the specific number was, but he certainly fired a lot of rounds. Obviously, this is an inside scene. Uh, we're securing a search warrant for the location. Well, we'll have to methodically go through, count the number of rounds that were fired from the weapon to really kind of give you a better estimate on what those numbers are but right now i don't have that specific information is there any chance he fired more than one weapon I mean, it, it, oh that's very possible like, uh, absolutely yeah. very possible that he fired more than one weapon all right Chief, those, those shots at those uh the shops down the street here a block and a half does that fit into this, or is that just some weird coincidence? No, uh, we think uh, that's based upon the weaponry, the weaponry that I've seen uh, that's inside of this location, uh, that it is very probable that is one of the rounds uh, that was fired from this location here. Okay, well, I want to thank the citizens of the District of Columbia for their patience uh, tonight, especially those who were not able to get access to their homes, to the family members uh, who had children in school. Thank you for your patience with us tonight uh, to bring about a resolve to this um, very unfortunate situation. Good night. Thank you. Good night. A very significant update there from D.C. Police Chief Robert Conti in D.C.'s Van Ness neighborhood after a quadruple shooting there at around 3.30 earlier today. The chief saying evil reared its ugly head in our community. Now, the big news out of that press conference, Chief Conti is saying the suspect is dead. They believe he took his own life as police were preparing to breach his apartment. Now, you know that earlier we were telling you about that 23 year old Raymond Spencer, a person of interest in this case. Police would not say uh, Chief Conti wouldn't say that's who the suspect is in this case, seeming to work around some uh, legal legal parameters there, but uh, essentially saying that person of interest that has expired and the suspect in this case is dead. And you know, the chief really painting a sick picture here, saying that when they got into that suspect's apartment, they found what appeared to be a sniper's nest, if you will, with six firearms uh, and multiple rounds of ammunition. And they said the suspect was just targeting people out on the streets, targeting everyday citizens. We now know that one of the men who was shot is a retired D.C. police officer. Two women were shot and also one child. Thankfully, they are all expecting uh, to make a recovery. But but what a day in that neighborhood and talk about the heartbreak, the panic, the tense moments. The chief now saying that neighborhood is safe as of 950 tonight. Again, those lockdowns lifted. We had students at the Edmund Burke School. They have since been relocated or reunited rather uh, with their parents at a reunification center at the Cleveland Park Library. Our uh, Larry Miller is on scene right now, not too far away from where the chief spoke just moments ago. And uh, Larry, give us an update on the scene there on the ground. Yeah, certainly a change in posture, Lorenzo, based on what we saw earlier this afternoon when those shootings were taking place. I can tell you now that Van Ness now open to traffic as police look to get the roads reopened here after what has been a chaotic and really troubling day when you think about the details of this. Again, four people who were shot. As we heard from the police chief, Robert Conti, he talked about the sniper attacks that we saw some 20 years ago back in 2002 when uh, Lee Boy Mohammed and um, I'm sorry, uh, Lee 
Malvo Muhammad and uh, Lee Boy Malvo were terrorizing essentially the, the entire city. It was at that time that we saw 10 people dead, three people injured, and it was kind of a similar situation here throughout parts of Northwest DC as we saw a number of people kind of running around chaotically trying to find safety uh, as a result of that shooting that took place. Looks like we have a little bit of disturbance there, but nothing to be concerned about for the most part. I got to tell you that people here say that, you know, they're thankful that things are certainly, certainly starting to turn around. Uh, the a number of people that have gathered behind me said that they've been spending much of the evening out here watching how this investigation has been unfolding, looking at exactly how police have been responding to this situation. And just the fact that they know now that the suspect uh, who police believe it was involved in the situation is dead certainly gives them a sense of relief that safety and the city is certainly back to normal. But the city is still very much shaken as a result of this shooting that we saw earlier this afternoon. Lorenzo. Yeah, still shaking, no doubt, and it's going to stay that way for quite a while. We know the chiefs say they're going to start packing up. They're going to get out of that scene and conduct their investigation from their offices. Uh, but you better bet a lot of the people there, especially after listening to this news, the, what the police chief described there, a lot of folks were wondering why. Who is this person being targeted? Who are these victims? You had uh, windows smashed or blown out from bullets in uh, a nearby school, restaurants. You had the window smashed out in certain cars. So there, there didn't seem to be a target lining up, but we heard from the, the chief just a moment ago saying it appears this suspect just aiming from a fifth floor apartment in a nearby building, just targeting random citizens on the street, which is just so, so sick. But thankfully, this wasn't much worse, as the police chief said as well, um, as we look at life get back to normal, if you will, along um, the Van, DC's Van Ness neighborhood. Uh, but I want to go to our Casey Nolan. He's been following the developments uh, there in Van Ness uh, throughout the day as well. And, and Casey, you've been out there, you've been trying to get some of those answers and the, the police chief answering a bit more tonight. He did. I don't think we can overstate, you know, when he says this could have been worse. I, I think that's almost an understatement. One example, something he touched on at the very end there. I don't know if you could hear it, Zoe, but so we are probably about four or five blocks from where this shooting took place. Another two blocks in that direction is where they believe they have found another bullet hole in a business that came from this shooter, sniper, wannabe sniper, uh, from his from his weapon, from his gun. So we're talking about a, a pretty uh, you know wide area where bullets were flying indiscriminately. And as you said, as you pointed out, what the chief said, uh, these are people that were just going about their daily lives, had no connection, no connection to each other, no connection to the shooter that they know of at this time who were targeted. They, he described this specifically as a sniper-like situation with an intent to kill. Um, you know, you think about stories we've heard around the country, Las Vegas, we think about Sniper, the story we had here in D.C. 20 plus years ago or so. Uh, the fact that we have no one killed is remarkable, I think, uh, is what we, what we got from that press conference. Yeah, and Casey, if you can touch on this for me, if you will, I know a lot of people watching us online right now. There's a good chance those of you watching, you've seen some video uh, reportedly from that scene, and it's extremely graphic. You heard dozens and dozens of shots being fired. You asked the chief about that video and its authenticity. What is he saying about it? Hey, folks, need you guys to start breaking down so we can reopen this street. If you guys can just move over. Yeah, and we may have to move here for a second. Uh, Zoe, if you guys have video that you can show, we'll move and talk at the same time. But they're going to reopen Police Connecticut, so that's good news for people in the neighborhood. As for that video you're talking about, uh, yeah, the chief confirmed they do believe at this time that that is video uh, of the shooting. Now, whether it was live streamed or whether he posted it later, they do believe that that is video taken by the shooter of today's event, of, of, the, of, the, of the shooting. A parent told me they watched it. It's hard to watch however you, you know, come across it. I can only imagine what it's like to watch it as a parent of a child in the school there. But uh, this parent stopped to tell me that they were confident it was the video because they could see, they go frame by frame, signs that were up in some of their windows that they had just put up a few days ago. So they knew it was their school, they knew it was their neighborhood, and they knew it was you know, now. Um, and so how that video, what, the ro what role it may have played in tracking down this suspect, uh, we don't yet know, but it was, uh, the chief says that's the real thing, unfortunately. Um, it, it's hard, hard to watch, again, even if, if you just come across it 
blindly, not to mention for those who had to live through this today. Yeah, extremely tough to watch. And it also puts all of this into perspective, again, reiterating that no lives were lost today after dozens of dozens of shots were fired from an apartment, a fifth floor apartment in the Van Ness neighborhood. The chief saying the suspect in this case again is dead. It's believed he took his own life as police and federal agents were preparing to breach that apartment. And we can also let you know that you've seen that picture circulating of 23 year old Raymond Spencer, a person of interest. Police say that person is no longer a person of interest in this case, not really naming him as a suspect. At this point, you heard the chief there mentioning that until next of kin is notified again, working around some of those legal parameters. But really the, the description, I have to keep going back to this of sort of the carnage that took place in this city today, a person just setting up a snipers like nest in their apartment and just shooting people at random again. Thankfully, those four people, including a 12 year old girl, a man who's a retired DC police officer and two women, they are expected to be OK. We're going to wrap our, uh, our arms around this and uh, try to get much more information for you about the suspect in this case, the victims and all those impacted by these shootings today. We'll see you right here on TV and on